And while Bill starts the build, Guy has to learn how to pilot a hovercraft. So he heads for a lesson with the British military elite. The Royal Marines have used hovercraft everywhere from the glaciers of Norway to the marshlands of southern Iraq. They've agreed to teach Guy how to use one of their so-called LCACs, the landing craft air cushion. It's fairly large, that's all I'll mean, that. Yeah, yeah, these are basically all watertight compartments that keep us floating. All the flitching and the welding in there, that's a lot of work going into that. Hovercraft Commander Corporal Gavin Smith joins Guy's team as driving instructor. Like a bloody assault course, that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. The British military have got uh, four hovercraft, four of these, and they're all with the Royal Marines, 539 Assault Squadron. Oh, is that right? Which is obviously what I'm part of. And a million quid a pop. Is that what they are? They weigh over 10 tonne, um, they're nearly 600 horsepower, all limited to 45 knots. Which is 51 miles an hour. But it doesn't sound a lot, but it's the fastest craft we've got in the Royal Marines. Is that right? Yeah. You can use this as a CASIVAC platform, basically casualty extraction. Yeah, So yeah. if you've got any casualties, if you're not waiting out in the water like some of the boats are out there, wading up to your waist, carrying a stretcher, this will come straight up right next to them, pick them up, get them on, turn, burn, straight away, out, back to the, the platform no that you've messing. come from. No messing. Right, if you want to jump in the, uh, the pilot seat. The pilot seat? Yeah, you're right. a pilot on these, you're not, you're not a driver. <laughs> pilot. <You're> a pilot. <laughs> Come up under power a little bit. And not steering, try and keep it straight as it's going down. Hovercraft are said to be flown because controlling one is more like being in charge of an aircraft than a boat. And a little bit more power. That's it, start steering in until I left a little bit. Learning to fly a hovercraft is the most technical amphibious vehicle course a Marine can do, and it takes nearly a year to get to command level. But Gavin is confident in Guy's ability and lets him go faster than any other first-timer. That's 40-odd miles an hour. Uh, Blue for it already, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can see that's the edge of a sandbar, so we're already yeah. pushing a bit left here. A little bit of power, back and forward pitch, no dramas. Dead smooth on the water compared to the land. So much smoother and faster. I think I took to it like um, a duck, maybe. Start bringing it round to the right. There you go. That's it. And then back onto the forward pitch and drop the reds quite a bit. There we go now. Beautiful. That's better than some of the trained lads. Uh, <laughs> that. I've got a good teacher, I think, mate. There's a lot to do. There is a lot. Just everything to take into account. My God. We're up to 38, 30, almost 39 knots over there, yeah. That is licking on, and that's nothing. What we're going to have to do, we're going to have to do at least double that's, that. Yeah, at, at least, least double, double yeah. that. Yeah. Ooh. Double and a bit more. If he carries on with driving like that, it's, it's, it's perfect, really, yeah. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's having the balls to go that flat out, isn't it? <laughs> 85 mile an hour in a hovercraft, I think, is going to be mind-bending. Guy's skills have impressed, and the Marines ask him to stick around. He's going to experience how they use a hovercraft in anger. Right, my intent is to find the Dinger Bells OP, which is the local Devonian fanatical group. Guy will have to issue commands that direct two hovercraft in a beach raid. Charlie 24 will lead with ground combat. Guy Martin is in charge of the Elcats as they move out. First, they have to find the enemy position, then destroy it. It's going to be a frontal assault, so momentum and tempo are going to be key. The assault will take place at Saunton Sands in Devon, where the D-Day landings were rehearsed. Right, Jim, that's it. Happy hunting. We're getting the hovercraft. And I have to command the hovercraft into position. 2-1, this is 2-4. Are you ready? 2-1, Jim, we're ready to go. 2-4, roger out. As the intensity increases, Guy fumbles his commands. 2-1, this is 2-4. Suspicious packs, packs on the starboard side. So we're going to give the prepare to beach for the lads. So prepare to beach. Stand by the beach. Guy, what can we see? What can we see? When pressed for information, he simply freezes. Did not know what I was doing. Just, just let him know what you see. Two times enemy packs. Back at beach. 
Two folks. Two folks. And I just, I wasn't precise enough in what I was saying. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't really know what I was saying. Boy in a quad bike, boy in a quad bike. No sign of any guns. Contact one. Contact one. Get around, front. Contact one. Send it over there. Gunners rapid fire. Gunners rapid fire. Gunners rapid fire. The live fire and simulated casualties make the exercise incredibly realistic. As mad as it was, it was so planned. Everything was planned. And whatever happened in that certain situation, there was a plan to cover that situation. You just everything was it was spot on. And I think we need to go about our task in the same way. I mean, you guys don't rock around. Charlie, team move forward. We'll go get a stretcher. All the bases need to be covered. Cock on. Cheers, mate. If we're going to go into a front plow, this, this, and this needs to happen. Right, jets, close in. If it's going to flip backwards, this is going to happen. Yes. I mean, this might be just me jumping ship. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I need to learn. As long as it's covered. As long as it's covered. Two one to two four. Prepare to move to starboard. Is that yeah? That's a lot of planning to do in not a lot of time. Here we go again. Yeah, here we go again. 